In fantasy football, breakouts and busts are some of the most important players to get right. We have each of us bringing a breakout and a bust to the table to see. And one of my look, my bust is a little spicy. It's hot. You're, you're not gonna like it, but listen to what I got to say because I think we're gonna help you in fantasy. Stay tuned to this episode. When it comes to beard, hair, face, and body care products, Scotch Porter means business, Mike. Oh, they mean business. Just like that beard on your face means business. It means business. What I love about their products is that they are non-toxic, healthy, and they really help men with their grooming issues that they face every day. And now, just in time for the summer, I'm excited to share that they have a 50% off sale happening right now on some of their best-selling products collections for a limited time stock up during the sale get your self-care products in check visit scotchporter.com slash footballers to save 50 percent off collections today uh we're talking about all the things men deal with itchiness dryness shedding when it comes to your beard you gotta and your take hair. care of your beard man you do and uh if you need some new grooming products to get your routines into swing for a limited time only visit scotchporter.com slash footballers to pick yours up today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday, June 17th, Mike Wright, Jason hey. Moore. Hello. Andy Holloway with you once again. Judge Giamatti behind the scenes. Pulling the levers. <laughs> I just looked back and his face was sheer terror. <laughs> was he afraid I was going to throw, throw to him? Uh, he must have been. You've I'm been here. doing this for a while. Yeah. I think I'd be used to it. Um you still get nervous every time we ask you a question? Yeah, like yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I think the other day he said like um he got a little red. Like he he felt flush. Oh. When we yeah, put him I, on the spot. I was saying I hate how my body temperature just naturally seems to go up a lot. Yeah, like every time on the show live when we're like, What are all the things you like about your fiance? Right. Like yeah. when we throw those Let's type of talk questions about that, Brooks. At you. Uh, this is a fantasy football show. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well done. <laughs> you have learned a thing or two over a thousand plus shows. It's a good distraction technique. Buy or sell on the show today. Some news to talk about. Uh, today's episode is all about our early breakouts and busts. So we've each taken the opportunity, and these are our personal early selections. So if you have the Ultimate Draft Kit or the UDK Plus, you know we have sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values in there. Those are more of our consensus picks for the year, and they do change. Like we've recently updated a few of them. They they do change, uh, and some of the the guys presented right now might be uh, similar, but you're going to hear a, a more elaborate breakdown of why they're there. Yeah, and obviously um, both of these breakouts bus very important to your roster. Can give you an advantage if you can identify these players on draft day, get value, avoid players. So we'll make the case and discuss, debate some of those names on today's show. So that'll be exciting. If you don't have the Ultimate Draft Kit yet, I want to encourage you to head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, this is our our baby, our pride and joy. And if you get the UDK Plus, I want to I want to call those people out right now. The draft analyzer is coming very very soon. We're talking beginning of July, and people want to know what this is. This is part of the UDK Plus which also comes with the Dynasty Pass and the DFS Pass. But the Draft Analyzer is going to be your opportunity to import or add your team roster and have it analyzed um, by the three of us. Uh, we'll be looking at strengths and weaknesses for your team. We'll be breaking down consistency, risk for your team, giving you some action plan items to improve your roster. I mean, we say every single year, you don't win your league at the draft but you set the foundation for a championship season. And so we want to give you the insights you've been begging for. Yeah. I mean, we used to have the ultimate draft review and oh boy, 
Whew, that was oh boy. Uh, that was some work, and everybody's wanted that product, you know, especially once you've done your draft. And now it's basically coming back, and uh, we're going to be able to give you advice on the on the on the fly. Yeah, so that will be a part of the UDK Plus debuting in early July. Uh, in July, we also go to three shows a week, which we mentioned recently, and then five a week from August through December. Oh, brother. Deep breaths, Mike. Uh, what do you I do to get into shape? You you hitting the Peloton? Uh, I mean, I'm hitting the bike, hitting some of the weights. Yeah. What do you do for vocal exercises to get ready for like oh. five, six shows a week? Nothing needed, my friend. Nothing. It's just built in. Yeah, it's just genetics. <laughs> you got to give me some of them genetics, man. Not for sale. I don't know what my voice is going to do. <laughs> not, for, not, a, not available. Um, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers if you want to watch the show. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, the judge has a great buy or sell for us today. Buy or sell, at least four running backs catching 75 or more passes in 2021. That's a lot. In a 17-game season, though, we do get an extra game this year. That would be 4.4 receptions per game which doesn't sound like a ton for a pass-catching running back, but there were only two last year, Alvin Kamara, J.D. McKissick. All oh, smooches. Uh, which smooches, you know, smooches does not have Alex Smith anymore. There are a few players in the league with less respect from Mike, the fancy hitman, than J.D. McKissick. Oh, no, that, I absolutely respect him. I respect his game. I think he is an excellent uh, real-life football player, but – the the targets that he saw last year that's not happening again okay and uh we do have the extra game like i said back in 2019 there were five players mccaffrey who didn't play last year eckler missed last sometime last year camara again cohen who didn't play last year and leonard fournette who played sparingly and obviously changed teams so uh the year before that it was five so we had a couple years in a row then just two last year due to injury jason i'm going to toss it to you by yourself yeah, I mean, last year we had two of the best, if not the two best, pass-catching running backs mm -hmm. in Saquon Barkley and Christian McCaffrey who missed the season. So with 17 games, you might think, yeah, let's go. And I, this is an easy sell for me. There, I, I do not believe that there will be four. I, I actually currently projected my, my stats. I went and I looked at, you know, because we've statted out the entire league. I only have two right now mm. over 75. That you're, would be Christian McCaffrey – and Austin Eckler. So those are my only two running backs I've got projected for more than 75 receptions this season. Which, obviously, you're making a statement there, one that maybe the listener doesn't quite pick up on instantly, but you would be projecting the worst single-season reception total in the career of Alvin Kamara, despite the extra game. He's always been 80-plus. Mm -hmm. I have um, Kamara currently for 72, so he is just barely on the outside of that threshold. That would obviously be less for him, but I am projecting a Taysom Hill season. Now, that's the real Kamara question for me. Because it doesn't if, bother me that much. If Jameis Winston was the quarterback, I would I would certainly have Alvin Kamara above that threshold. I'll buy at least four. I think CMC, Kamara, and Eckler are locks. And I think at least one other, you know, nobody would have projected McKissick last year coming out and doing right. that. No one would have projected Leonard Fournette in Jacksonville two years ago doing it. So uh, it was James White as an anomaly the year before. So I think somebody, whether it's Saquon, who has a high probability, or somebody else over 17 games will figure it out. So I'll buy it. But I think it'll be four. I don't think it's going to be more than that. I have it exactly at four oh. as, as well. And the, uh, the name that we haven't brought up, but I haven't projected to hit it again, it's Ezekiel Elliott, man. He has been used heavily as a pass catcher in recent history, at least with Dak Prescott. It was, you know, not the greatest once uh, once Dak went down to the season-ending ankle injury, unfortunately, for Zeke. But I think that he can bounce back there. I mean, you know, uh, like Eckler and Christian McCaffrey are locked in. I, I have Kamara projected over, but I'm also on Team Jameis right now with my projections. So that re that remains to be seen. So I think it's going to be at least a while before we really know if it's Jameis or Taysom. But uh, – with Andy, Andy is uh, you're projected for Taysom, correct? Uh, yes, I am. It's pretty fifty-fifty at this point, though. It's getting more that direction from for me. But I'm I'm with you that even if it's Taysom, I think he figures it out. We saw four games 
of yeah, Taysom Hill. And in the Al- last one, I think he like gave yes, him ten receptions. He, he hyper targeted Alvin, and he, like Kamara is Kamara's the second best pass catching weapon on the team. Taysom Hill's going to figure that out. Yeah, and and the head coach. A uh, couple other names that could come into the mix. Joe Mixon could push it. Um, he could get towards it. I have him for sixty eight. I have Barkley for sixty nine. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, that's a. I mean, that is the silver bullet for fantasy football running backs. If you right. find that player that does that, you have a baseline, you have a ceiling. It's a wonderful thing. Come on, Najee. <laughs> Let's sure. Yeah. It's, Never look, know. It's possible. All he has to do is throw him the ball a ton. <laughs> right. That's yeah, it. if he can snap it wildcat and then throw it to himself. <laughs> All right, that was Buy or Sell, brought to you by our great friends at Pristine Auction. You know we love Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit towards any sports memorabilia purchase. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. The Bears head coach Matt Nagy. Oh, what did he do? Matt Nagy insisted that Andy Dalton would be the Bears starting quarterback for week one. His quote, and I'll, I'll read it off for you. Andy Dalton is our starter. Justin is our number two, and we're going to stick with this plan. You just got to s- trust the plan. Yeah, you got to trust that. The budget magician strikes again. What? I got a bunch of cards right in the right in the face. You never know where they're going to go, man. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> he so, saw, wasn't there was something about going around saying that <laughs> it's fun to throw the oh, cards. Oh, it is very fun. Uh, him saying there's just th- there's no outcome to him where – where yeah, he said where there's no fields scenario is, where yeah scenario yeah. where fields is the starting quarterback and look i i get you told andy dalton some things when you coerced him to join your your team but as the head coach of an nfl friend did i hit you in the eye no 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 oh you're you, good you're, you look like you got a <laughs> he's bleeding uh if you are the head coach of this team and you're not leaving at least a scenario where justin fields is your week one starter you're being a bad coach. Yes. There should be a scenario where yes. you allow a player to beat out another player so the best one plays. I mean, like, Doctor Strange ran through how many scenarios where it was how many times can the Avengers beat Thanos? Only takes one. 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 There's at least a scenario where it can happen. That being said, I also, do he believe should. He should. the feels. budget magician. I do believe – that there is a take lock here um, because there's pride on the line. There's what your plan was. Matt Nagy is a a bold magician. and He did start Mike Davis week one yep. over uh, his draft pick. David I, had proje- I had projected Dalton for six or seven games, so I still believe it. I don't know if that's the best or worst case scenario. I mean, people make a big deal about Patrick Mahomes' this season in Kansas City behind Alex Smith, and, you know, they use that as the blueprint for perfect quarterback development, transition, success. And I get that, but it's a little bit dishonest because there is no proof that Patrick Mahomes handed the keys in week three of his rookie season doesn't have as much success as Alex Smith. You can't prove what didn't happen. So you don't know. Like, that team went to the playoffs and lost in the first round with Alex Smith. Yeah, I was going to say. They could have won the Super Bowl. In addition, Alex Smith at that point in his career was was playing great football, yes. far better than Andy Dalton. He wasn't a free agent off the street. Right. So, yes, you should. If, I mean, Bears fans are um, – most of their lifeblood is now filled with Justin Fields. I mean, it's, it's the way they're breathing. And – not having the possibility that he's allowed to win it in camp and preseason. Well, that's, that's just, just we, that's just stupid. for week one. I mean, I, I yes. mean, I I have not changed my projections. I started the off season with Andy Dalton starting the first two games, and then they make a switch in week three because it, this reminds me of one of those you know Mike Tyson type of quotes where. Um, you know, everyone has a plan to get punched in the face mm-hmm. and they're going to go out there and say, Oh, you got to stick to the plan. You got to trust the plan. And then it's like, Oh, but then it, your plan is Andy Dalton's your quarterback, and that's going to be a problem. Well, I mean, and they want to win, and they're a pretty good team, and I, you really can't go the other direction. That part is true. Like, you can't really start with Justin Fields, watch your rookie fail yes. in two weeks, and yes. then because you're committing – like, if he struggles as a rookie, 
you'd be committing to 16 games of struggle. You can't pull him. If Correct. You start, so that in that regard, it is more logical to say, hey, can we catch fire with Andy Dalton? He is better than the quarterbacks we've had and go from there. But Alex Smith in Kansas City did not have a losing season. Like yeah. He, he was he was great. You cannot compare Alex Smith and his success to Andy Dalton. Well, the, I, I the, just think it's funny that they always say on his third team in three years or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. The good news for Bears fans is that you open the season um against the Los Angeles Rams. So Andy Dalton Oh, they're just making a sacrifice. That's right. They're making a sacrifice. Andy Dalton will look real bad. And then the next week you get the Bengals. They call that with the Justin Fields. <laughs> yes. The Ben Danucci. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Vic Fangio said Cortland Sutton will not start on the pup list. That's great news for his recovery. Cortland Sutton will not start on the uh training camp on the pup. Rashad Penny, oh boy, underwent a minor knee surgery. Oh. Expected to be ready for training camp. Yeah. Okay. Farewell. That sucks. Uh, poor Rashad Penny, man. That's that's a lost career from uh, one major knee surgery. Man, I just loved Penny coming out. And then and then it was sad because once he was given the opportunity, it looked like, okay, yeah, it did. this is what we were talking about. Penny's going to be great. And then the knees go. And this is really neither here nor there. But when we're, while we're driving the bus over Matt Nagy, you have to at least acknowledge that Brian Schottenheimer out of Jacksonville they have said uh, they won't name their starting quarterback. Quote, it's still too early to say how things are going to play out. Um, now, if you are if you have not followed the offseason. You're not ready to jump in on the breakout the, Gardner Minshew, Mike? The Jaguars drafted uh, the number one quarterback. Uh, maybe you've heard of him, Trevor Lawrence, um, who is, you know, their starter and the entire world knows it. What kind of Cardinals human being didn't do would, that stupidity? What kind no. of human being with with a straight face say that? There's no one that believes that, including him. Why? Why are you gonna I know, play these games? That's what it, that's what bothers me. Is it what ad, what advantage are you getting here by playing this game, Trevor Lawrence? You're getting a disadvantage. Trevor Lawrence knows he's the starter. Yeah, but you you are you're getting a disadvantage. You enable your rookie quarterback like they did with Kyler in Arizona, and they've done with quarterbacks in the past that go 101 say you're the starter prepare like the starter yeah. lead like the starter but they already are <laughs> like that's the thing is you're, you're, he knows he's yeah but if you're if you're if your offensive passing coordinator isn't coming out publicly and saying that you're doing that's just man, stupid like, yeah you're doing gardner dirty all right like you're giving him false hope yes don't do that to him those jorts are a backup jorts come on it's ridiculous all right that was today's news and notes Presented by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. You will not regret it. Ladies, Just did a mock draft on Sleeper on Tuesday. If you did. haven't heard that episode yet, go listen. I crushed everybody. You know what's great is mm. great. some of these mock drafts, you get the, uh, it goes right for one person, and everybody thinks, you know, Jason won the draft or something. I have seen vast opinions yes, on this draft. Very, very I've split. Seen, and I've seen the, Mike obviously oh. won. Jason obviously won. Andy obviously won. Absolutely. If you read the comment, like if you just look at the poll, you go, okay, well, Jason won because, you know, I won the poll. Second pick in the but draft. But if yeah. you look at the comments, um, the, it's exactly what you're saying. It's like, oh, clearly Andy. Oh, Mike, no question. Oh, Jason, it's not close. It's just completely split. It was a fun draft. It was. So breakouts so, coming soon you can check that out so we're going to get into breakouts and busts but first want to thank today's sponsor headspace ladies and gentlemen mental health is at the forefront right now make it part of your self-care plan this year get into some meditation some guided meditation and check out headspace at your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of those guided meditations it's an easy to use app i have jumped on there i too i i got my own mental health that i got to take care of and i like i have been thinking about it I'm like I really do need to. I got to get back into meditating. You feel better when you do. Like when you're on the outside, you're like that seems kind of you know it's a little wacko. It's crazy. It is not. It is. It melts the stress away. It really helps give you an energy boost and and just it clears the head, gets you ready for the day. And Headspace can get you there. It's a proven to help you feel better. Their approach to mindfulness, like I said, it can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus. 
increase your overall sense of well-being. It's backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, and over 60 million downloads. They make it easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers. You're going to get a free one-month trial with access to Headspace, full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash footballers today. And we want to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. They are the best, easiest virtual private network to keep you safe, keep your devices protected, keep your, you know, your identity, what you're searching, everything like that. It's all on lockdown. It's Mind your, your business. Mind your business. Um, you know, look, they're very easy to install. They can be put on your phones, your tablets, your computers, whatever you're watching, whatever you're searching. You know, you're, you're protected. And, and personally, I like it when... You know, if you're going to a public Wi-Fi, which you, you have to do like at all these restaurants now, you you're, you you can make sure that your devices are protected and your information is secure um, on those public Wi-Fis. You can get 24-7 support with email, with chat. So go to IPVanish.com right now. They have an incredible deal. It's 65% off. So that's just $3.49 for your first month or $31.49 for a year this is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get it for 65% off. IP Vanish is the best of the best. 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. So show them some love. Remember, it's IPVanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and protect yourself online right now. Breakouts. <laughs> well, you... Were you breaking out of a jail in that video? I guess. Also, I, I, I like the insinuation that you are a, a criminal breaking out of jail. That's that's a fun thing to think about. But you're you're in the jail. Why are you breaking out wearing the burglar mask? <laughs> you have to make that in jail, and you put it on before you break out. Like, don't you want to be inconspicuous as you try to break out of jail and not look like someone who's committing a robbery? Well, they don't. You don't want to give away your identity. Now, you know be, what I mean? Like, like <laughs> you don't know who's breaking out. Could be any of us. If you're not watching on YouTube, there was a there's a graphic for breakouts that I certainly did not have a part in. And oh, uh, that was fabulous. Yeah, I'm wearing a mask back behind some <laughs> chain link fence, and then like, I break out. You look like the Hamburglar. Yeah, that's <laughs> special. Um, uh, Brian drinks sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he makes the videos when he's sober. Oh. Sometimes he doesn't. All right. <laughs> All right, we are jumping into our early breakout picks. We've each picked one breakout, one bust we want to highlight today. Uh, I am going to let one of you guys go first. I'll hop in. I'll hop in. Please. And, and Somebody again, else. These no. are <laughs> so just anyone, anyone else. Anyone. I'm not going to go first. Either of you, just not you. Just yeah. not no, Jason. No, go ahead, Jason. Um, these, you know, these, again, are not necessarily our consensus picks. Uh, these are individual picks. And um, for me, I really believe that Cam Akers is going to have a breakout season. Um, there are a lot of reasons to believe this, right? We, we saw the breakout in some capacity, not for fantasy football, certainly not last year because he started the year injured, was in a timeshare. It was at the end of the season when he really got going. Uh, Daryl Henderson got injured, and then in the playoffs, he just went completely hamburglar. In those two playoff games, 24 and a half touches, 136 yards and a touchdown was the average between those two games. That would have been 21 and a half fantasy points if those were, you know, uh, right. games that were played in, in the regular season. Now, there are some things and some misnomers with that, right? Uh, Daryl Henderson wasn't there for those two games, um, and we don't want to put too much emphasis on that. You know, Sony Michelle from the past has taught us that those playoff stretches, when they're really focusing on that running game, maybe that isn't prescriptive. But there are lots of reasons to like Cam Akers. First, his talent. He's unbelievable. We all loved him coming out. Andy, I think he was your number one guy coming out. Uh, last year pre-NFL draft. They spent a lot of capital on him, and they were shown that he can get the job done. This offseason, Sean McVay has talked about he loves the three-down skill set, and I think the biggest reason they went and got Matthew Stafford 
is so that they throw the ball more to the running back and to the tight ends, and there are a lot of targets here to go around. That was not part of his game last year. You look at the passing to the running backs for the Rams, and it was pretty much non-existent. Um, and so this is a projection of saying, I think Cam Akers is going to be very involved in the passing game. Uh, not not like us, Saquon or Christian McCaffrey. I have him with 66 targets, which is a really large projected uptick. Mm -hmm. But I think is is it makes complete sense. You have 140 missing targets between Josh Reynolds and Gerald Everett. And you have Matthew Stafford coming in, who has always been a check down guy. Theo Riddick was fantasy gold. Yeah, Deon he was. DeAndre Swift last year was held afloat by those five targets every single game, five targets. And Cam Akers is a really good pass catching running back. He just didn't do it his rookie year. The offensive line is great. I think this is going to be a top offense, and we've seen it with Gurley before. Um, and we've also seen, um, you know, we I had Kyle look up second year running backs that ended their rookie year strong. Um, that, you know, look, Le'Veon Bell, Eddie Lacy, uh, Monty Ball, he failed. Um, mm -hmm. Jeremy Hill, David Johnson, Jordan Howard, Chris McCaffrey, Nick Chubb, Miles Sanders, and now Cam Akers were rookies uh, in recent history where the end of the year was when they started to come on and their average draft position was like, okay, we believe that this guy's going to break out. Do they break out or not? And the vast majority of those players had phenomenal second years. So I think this is a team I believe in. It's an offensive head coach I believe in. Um, and it's a quarterback that checks down to the running back. So I, I, I believe what we saw at the end of the year, which was complete domination from Cam Akers, happens for every game that he's starting. I think when he came back from the injury and saw the workload that he, that he received, that was a vote of confidence from the head coach. I don't really see any holes in the, the, the logic that you're bringing forth. I mean, it's not fair to any rookie or second-year player to say, well, they can't do it because they've never done it. I mean, that's true of every single rookie. It's true of every single second-year player for a lot of these metrics. So, yeah, I mean, for a player to be put in this position, his real competition is is a player that is – we've seen it, I think, enough um, from Daryl Henderson that – He's complimentary. He's been injury prone. And so if what you're saying is right, if the pass volume goes up, no reason not to believe in Sean McVay, no, no reason not to believe in the offense. I feel like at times you've been a resistant Cam Akers breakout um, I'm resistant apologist. On, yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> resistant upon how high he is in my rankings because well, it's you're almost scary. like, I, I don't even want this to be true. But, but Mike said, look, you know, you said in the office the other day, well, good. I mean, you need to have non-consensus picks throughout your rankings just based on your analysis, and you've been right on a lot of these. So as much as I'd love to pick apart the logic, I mean, the 140 missing targets from Everett and Reynolds, um, they need another regular passing threat that isn't Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I expect Van Jefferson to step it up a little bit, but that's uh, it's really the Everett targets that are – the big opportunity for him, the kind of uh, the the extra eligible receiving options. All right, Mike, who's your early breakout pick? I'm uh, sure I'll I'll be able to pick this one apart better. Yeah, of, of course you will. But uh, look, I'm going to tight end town here, where I'm giving you a breakout and a bust at the tight end position, and it will not shock you if you've been following me the the whole off season. If you're just jumping back in, welcome to the party. Adam Troutman from the New Orleans Saints, I believe that he is a breakout tight end this year and will be valuable for fantasy football. Take a look at last year's tight end two through seven. You got Darren Waller, of course, but then it's Tunyon, Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, Logan Thomas, and Mike Gesicki. What do all those players have in common? They are in teams that do not have, or at least last year, did not have a locked-in number two option in the passing attack, and the tight end was the one that filled that void. To me, when I was looking through everything, here are tight ends that could theoretically jump into the second position. And I'm, this, I'm not saying they all are going to, but they at least have the opportunity. You have Dallas Goddard, Kyle Pitts, Adam Troutman, one of the guys from New England, either Jonu or Hunter, uh, Cole Komet, but he's kind of got a Jimmy Graham prob problem, and then Evan Engram, who, guys... 
Evan Ingram led his team in targets last year, and we have just we have thrown him into the garbage. This is not a pro. This is not like Evan Ingram is the greatest. It's just a the the volume has always been there for Evan Ingram. It's just and funny because it's like if you got that many and you still weren't great, and then you add Galladay, people. I mean, right? Yeah. I'm just saying that like we Evan Ingram is he's still around. But anyway, this is an Adam Troutman uh, take here. He can move into the second position because you have Michael Thomas, and then you have. Who? I mean, it's either it's probably going to be either him or Alvin Kamara. Yeah, because you have Traquan Smith. He has never done it. He's played with a Hall of Fame quarterback his entire career. He still hasn't done it. You have then you have Marquez Callaway, Deontay Harris. You have no one is there and established as the number two option. Uh, he, let's okay. So the opportunity is there for him. Let's look at Adam Troutman, the player. He was a third round pick. He was a day two draft pick, and that's with the team traded essentially all of their day three picks to move up so that they could grab Adam Troutman. He came out of a smaller school, so that's the reason for it. He was a third-round pick, but he dominated at that school, a 38.1 dominator score, which means he accounted for 38% of his school's receiving yards and receiving touchdown. These are numbers that like the greats are not hitting. Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, Zach Gertz, they're all under what, uh, what Adam Troutman was able to do. Jared Cook and Josh Hill were both waived from the team. That's that's a huge amount of targets. And, and the number two option is available because Emmanuel Sanders, who was 16% of the Saints passing targets last year, he is also gone. I, it, we, like the, the, the option is there for him to have the breakout. I think that he has the skill set to break out. He was, last year, if you're looking at pro football focus and their grades – he graded out as the highest run-blocking tight end as a rookie. As a rookie, he was one of the, the pro football focus's best run-blocking tight end. He is not going to come off the field. How, this many, is, how many fantasy points do you get for run-blocking? It doesn't matter. No, I, That's You're going to be on the field. It, like So you're not going to have a, a Mark Andrews situation where, yeah, the fantasy points come, but it's a little – it's a little dicey when you're watching the game screaming, why is Mark Andrews not on the field? Why is he only playing for 50% of the snaps? Troutman is going to be on the field nonstop, and I think that he is in a position to really break out. We know what Jameis can do, right? We, we know that he will choose to hyper-target uh, a tight end if he needs to. And then Taysom Hill, we don't know yet. We don't know what his tendencies are, but we know that in, his, in two of his four starts, the last two, they let him throw the ball 37 times in both of those games. So they eventually started to let Taysom have some volume and rip the ball out there. As of this recording, four hours ago, a writer for the New Orleans Saints.com published the article, Adam Troutman poised for lead role among New Orleans Saints. Oh, so, I it, didn't even know about that. There That's because uh, writing that article is a lot easier than Marquez Callaway poised for lead <laughs> role. Um, look, the opportunity's in front of him. It's him and Nick Vanette. Right now on the depth chart, and Nick Vanette, his uh, his five year high is two hundred and sixty nine receiving yards. It's yeah, pretty nice. I mean, yeah. it's um, I mean, you're no you're no stranger to risky business at the tight end position. You're yeah. looking for some value there in a free pick. You're looking at somebody yes. that you can take with the last pick, and you'll probably get a really quick understanding of his role in week one, week two, and um, if you're wrong, you lost nothing. And if you're right, you gain the world. Yeah, our ADP source does not have an ADP right now for Troutman. That's you know he's he is not Criminal. someone that do they even let you draft him? Is that illegal? <laughs> and the, if I wanted to poke a is hole, that what the breakout is? If I wanted to poke a hole in this argument, um, the one thing I would say, obviously, obviously, he has done nothing um, so far. So this is a projection. That's you know for a breakout. That's all right. Um, yeah. But I would say my biggest issue is last year you thought there was going to be a breakout from Blake Jarwin. And he did. Oh, he did dang nothing. It, you got me. He did nothing. You got so, me. So <laughs> eggs on your face. Also, in his limited targets, he was uh, number three in yards per target. Adam Very Tra limited Troutman. targets. Never, Adam never had more than three catches in a game or three targets. In yeah, a game he like was. That. He was not utilized. But thirty nine percent on the field last year. But had a chance to learn from two really good. Yeah, I mean, like, like Jared Josh Cook Hill. is there. Yeah, and Josh Hill was a great contributor to that team, and he was in that room with those guys. Third round pick. Huge size, 6'3". Um, the opportunities in front of him. It's hard to break out at tight end. There's always yeah. – I mean, look, all you do is draft athletic tight ends in the NFL. Everybody that goes in the top four rounds at tight end has the physical comp to a superstar. 
I mean, yeah. that's just how it works. It is funny that in the unfathomably limited, like there, there are so few targets you can even go look at last year for Troutman that he has one of the best highlights yes. of the year where he runs a route that was like, man, that was like Odell Beckham in a, in a, you know, a 250 pound body. And I've, I've said it before, but like, go watch Adam Troutman highlights from him at college. Like this is a very fluid pass catching big man. Yeah, the the draft capital and some of the physical athleticism comps make me more willing to to buy in. I still projected him to be a next year thing, but the opportunity Fair. is I mean, the cost is nothing. Although last time you talked about him, you caused some real issues. <laughs> I did. My bad. Remember everybody went out and <laughs> yeah. tried to yeah, and trade Dynasty. for him or get trade <laughs> people were getting trade offers for him. Just be careful what you're doing here. I'm just I'm just trying to get his ADP to a respectable point. Well, my breakout pick, first I complimented Jason, which is rare, and now I'll annoy him, which is less rare on this show. But I'm going to go with Jamar Chase. Yes. Superstar in waiting Yes, at the wide receiver position. Um, I think we know the pedigree. We know the draft capital. We know the investment that Cincinnati made on this player, this 1,700-plus yard um, junior, I received word of the, I mean, there's a quote here that's really written. I, I was going to read it to the listeners. It's really more for Jason from, okay, I'm listening. from Joe Burrow. He wrote, look, uh, speaking of Jamar Chase, he's a really smart player. He understands what we're trying to do in this offense. I told everyone coming in that he is not going to bust. He knows exactly what to do. He's going to be a pro, and he is a great friend as well. Oh, oh man, that great friend, that is great. I love friendship is really the key here. I the mean, I tell you what, the, the amount. This is the first time I've heard a quarterback speak highly of his receivers. So this is this is really moving. Uh, they they don't always me. talk about the only ship that can't sink, Jason. That's true. That is true. They don't always use that phrase. I love the relationship that these two players have. I've talked about it a lot in this off season. The Bengals offense is a complete guarantee of passing volume joe burrow the rookie averaged 40 pass attempts per game last season joe burry <laughs> joe, joe burry. burry joe burrow the sophomore is going to throw the football because whether it was andy dalton there before burrow zach taylor throws the football and what i love about this is that jason believes that even more than i do because jason's projected jamar chase for more targets and a higher target share than even i have i have him for 71 for 11.50 and 7 on 110 targets, which is just a 16% target share in this mass passing volume offense. Jason's higher than I am in that regard. Every year, I looked at the last eight years, every year a rookie wide receiver is a top 24 finisher, guaranteed. Several years there's been two or three, and why not bet on the draft capital and, and the connection and the friendship and the rapport and the trust and the professionalism of Jamar Chase. I watched a lot of T. Higgins in college. I thought he was a really good player. I thought he impressed me last year. Jamar Chase is a better wide receiver today than T. Higgins is today as a professional NFL wide receiver. I believe that. Jamar Chase outshined back this is back in college, but he in college outshined Justin Jefferson. And he was and he's younger than Justin Jefferson. And I we just did the mock draft. Spoiler alert. I drafted Jamar Chase. I got him one pick behind Tyler Lockett. I believe that was the fourth round or fifth round. Probably the fifth round. Fifth round. Beginning of the fifth round. The upside potential when you look at all the intangibles. This is not Jamar Chase arriving in Seattle with two other competitive wideouts. This is uh, a high passing volume offense where I have a great deal of con – Joe Burrow, all the news on Burrow being ready for week one has been so positive – so I am just um, – look, it's not a guarantee. I'm not sitting here telling you it's a guarantee that this player is going to be um, a top 12 wide receiver. But the fifth-round cost combined with the breakout potential for the number five overall pick – look, Joe Burrow had a big hand in this pick, no question. You hear it in that quote. And uh, it went – you know, he went over um, Sewell because the team wanted to bring him in here to be a, a game changer. So I think – even in limited reception totals, he's going to be a big time breakout candidate. Yeah, I think that's that's fair to say that he could be a breakout candidate. I I project him for 
you know, those all the targets that AJ Green got last year. Um, and if he is the star um, that he hopefully is being drafted, you know, number five overall in the a NFL star draft, is born, Jason. Um, then yeah, the, the opportunity for a breakout didn't work out last time for Jason. <laughs> the uh, for Juju, uh, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, but the, the, uh, the opportunity is in, is in front of him. It's just a, a matter of, can he really do it rookie season with a bunch of other targets going to Higgins and Boyd? I don't project that that will happen. Sure. And that's fair. Now, now what, before I move on to our bus though, real quick, we saw it in the draft. Um, I believe you took him, you took T Higgins later than Jamar Chase in the draft. No, I, I took Devonte Smith. Who took T. Higgins? The a computer. Oh, you took. You're right. You took. You the took computer. Devonta Smith. Um, I think that what you have to take Chase over Higgins. I would. That's my belief for fantasy players because Higgins, while having a very nice rookie season, um, you're walking into year three with the number five overall pick coming in to compete with targets for you, with and, and Jamar Chase is the better draft day value right now than Higgins with all of that upside. So, um. Do you think that, that T. Higgins sees a bigger target share or a better production this year than last year? And I just don't see that world. So when, when you said you have to take him over T. Higgins, my, my initial thought was no, I don't, I don't even have – I have Higgins projected higher than Chase in my rankings. But that's different than what you're saying, and I would agree with what you're saying. You should draft Chase over Higgins because when you really look at – the breakout, the not not just what we are thinking are the most likely things to happen, but in the range of outcomes, a Jamar Chase breakout would be much much more powerful than a T Higgins breakout right? because you're you're talking about like a superstar who comes in and dominates the way that Odell Beckham did rookie year, something like that. Yeah, and I think T Higgins will will fit in well with this depth chart the way it looks now. Mm -hmm. He's a great player. Um, but I think you're going to see Jamar Chase do things on the field that make you go, oh, that's why T. Higgins didn't go number five. That yes. type of stuff. All right, bus time. Bus. <laughs> Wait, I didn't see it. Dude, you got to play it again. Oh, no. Do it. Bus. <laughs> what? No, I know what it is. Oh, yeah. I mean. Oh, I do too. That's Humpty Dumpty. I I am Humpty Dumpty in that video. I am an Eggman. What do we do with Brian, man? I don't. I'm look. I am loving it. He is just yeah. But see, that fuels him. Don't give him too much rope, man. Otherwise, he'll turn you into an egg falling off of a. It's, that already happened, and I love it. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, what you won't love, <laughs> he sat on a wall. <laughs> is you won't love hearing our first bust pick. Because I, I, <laughs> you, I'm going, sir. I'm going spicy. You, sir. I'm going spicy, and I mean, if you think about a bust, right? You're talking about it, you can't. Can you bust if you're an eighth round pick? No. I mean, can you bust if you're a fifth? Sure, maybe. But you, the in fantasy football, there are always, 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 always several players of the first round that bust. Um, and so I wanted to grab someone from the first, and I've talked about Derrick Henry, who I think has some red flags. Uh, so I didn't want to go with him. And when I'm just looking at certain possible red flags for where they are going, Saquon Barkley oh, what? Has oh, brother. a list of things to that are a little concerning that you at least what? need to be aware of while drafting him. And, and here's the thing. I've got him very high in my rankings. He is a phenomenal player. This is not me saying, oh, Saquon sucks. No, Saquon's amazing. But this is for fantasy football, and right now he's being drafted as the third or fourth player overall off the board. He is being drafted off of the memory of his unfathomable rookie season. That, that is what's happening. His rookie his season was... year was pretty good, too. Was it? Well, let's, di let's discuss that. Oh. So here's the thing. Oh, Saquon no. Barkley in his rookie season had oh. over 2,000 scrimmage yards, and he added to that 15 touchdowns. And that came with 91 receptions on 121 targets from Eli Manning. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. He only had one single game the entire year where he wasn't a top 20 back. Just unbelievable. And that's why it was a, it was a Christian McCaffrey-level difference making season and so that's why he's the third or fourth pick right now is because you're hoping you can get back to that what I'm saying here is not that Saquon's not going to be good for fantasy he's going to be great for fantasy I don't believe he's going to be that I don't believe he's going to be this 
Christian McCaffrey level, 121 target type of guy. Would and you call him a bust? He's in. He's in the bus. Yes, <laughs> for put his it, ADP. Put it this yes. way. Yeah, I mean, put it this way. I think if 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 Saquon Barkley finishes as the running back ten, I think we'll view him as a bust. If Didn't you draft David him, Johnson do that a few years ago. Do was, wasn't he the number two or three overall, and he finished at twelve, and everyone was a hundred percent. It was brutal, exactly. and it was like this is a bust. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not saying he's gonna like have a overall bad season but for where you're drafting him he's not going to do what he did his rookie year so 2019 right his his other great season where he finished as the running back 10 he missed games and everything is forgiven because it was all injuries right he missed uh basically four games it was he missed part of the the fourth game um but all of the games that he played in he was only on pace for 64 receptions on 89 targets because Eli Manning only played four of those games, and Daniel Jones did not target the running back quite the same. Now he has Kenny G and Kadarius Toney, who are going to get targets. You're not going to get back to this 120 target, 90 reception. It's just not, that's not even in the range of outcomes to me to Saquon Barkley. He's going to be, you know, like he was on pace in 2019, where he's 90 targets is great. 65 receptions is awesome. It's going to be good for fantasy. It's not going to be what you think it was. It's not going to get back to his rookie season. Didn't we get like a last second part of that season where he won some people some titles? Yeah. The and very, it brought back the memories of the mm -hmm. elite. Yes. The very end of that season, yeah, he, he was that unfathomably us. great. Yeah, he did it against our – He got like uh, an 80-yard touchdown in championship. I remember it. Yes. That but, sucked. But you want to know what he did right before that? You remember how I said in his rookie season he had one game outside of uh -huh. top 20? What he did right before that stretch where he won people championships was he had five. Well, he was hurt. He had five games in a row where he was not top 20 in fantasy. Okay, I mean, I'm not – my point is you said his his next season was great. His next season was good. It was. But if, if he did that but season – good's not great. If he, did, if he does that season this season and you draft him number three overall, you're going to call him a bust, and that's not to say anything about the fact he's coming off of a really bad injury. He's coming off a torn ACL, MCL, and meniscus in week two. And so you think, oh, there's a ton of time. But it was so bad, he didn't get surgery until October 30th. His age, his physical presence, he should be fine. He's going to come back from this surgery just fine on a long enough timeline. But whether or not he starts the season a little slow and then dominates later, great. My point is, between the injury, the pass catching, uh You don't want Daniel the listeners Jones, to be let down with their pick. I don't want them to be let down with their pick. And I'm not calling for Saquon to be just an outright horrible pick. He's great. He's going to be good for fantasy. He is going to disappoint if you draft him at the number three overall thinking you're getting a Christian McCaffrey or Dalvin Cook season. I don't think that happens. Well, I, Lude, where were you on Tuesday with all this stuff to j help me feel better about the Jonathan Taylor pick? This is exactly why. I mean, the, the slow start is why I took Jonathan Taylor over. Yeah, I mean, I, I – I, uh, I teased then that we were going to be talking about you Saquon uh, on this episode, but so who then? Who who who, who what? It, who's your number three? Because you got you got McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook as difference making running backs. Cam who, Akers. Who's next? Yes, yeah, is Cam, is, did is Cam, Cam finally Akers. make it up to three? My current running back three is Alvin Kamara. And I then, thought you were down on Kamara, though. Uh, I am down lower on the receiving volume for Kamara versus He doesn't versus have a number year. three. He skips it. No, I mean, he well, goes look, straight to four, it doesn't, doesn't he? It doesn't matter. You know, th this is Five? why we talk about tiers. This is why we talk. Like, you can be right next to someone in a rank. You can, yeah. be, you can be one spot away from them in a ranking, but you're not in that same tier as the caliber ahead of you. And I think there's a big break after Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook. Well, I mean, that, yeah, that is a good example for the tier-based drafting. Uh, Mike, you want me to go or you want to go? Uh, I'll jump in here. All right. Uh, like I said, I was going to have a breakout tight end and a bust tight end. And it was a great story last year. Uh, the player who he had switched positions and he had a breakout campaign, and that is Logan Thomas from the Washington football team last year. Terry McLaurin led the team with 134 targets, and then you had J.D. McKissick, Smooches, and Logan Thomas tied for 110 targets. Logan Thomas had the third most targets at the position. Number four on the list here for, uh, for Washington, Cam Sims had 48 targets. The wide receiver, too, <laughs> had 48 
targets. Let let that really sink in. The opportunity was there. He was very necessary. So you're not just against J.D. McKissick. No. You are you're speaking Smithless truth. Yes. That that's where I'm going. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna get into Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, but he was necessary. And here is – this is mind-blowing because I didn't even realize how incredible the splits were. Logan Thomas, in games with Antonio Gibson, okay, I, and I've, I have uh, removed the Pittsburgh game from, Antonio, from this split because, look, Antonio Gibson wasn't in that game. Right. In games where Logan Thomas played with, with Antonio Gibson, he averaged 33 receiving yards per game. Those three – Games without Antonio Gibson, he averaged 80 receiving yards. He became even more necessary, and that's really where he did his damage. His his first and second best output of the year were those games without Antonio Gibson. And now, what has the team done? They, well, Kelvin Harmon is coming back from an ACL tear. The team just gave Curtis Samuel a three-year, $34.5 million contract. And this is not just a an unknown free agent. This is a reunion of the coach that drafted Curtis Samuel. And he said, I need you to come be my number two on this team, clearly, uh, because they need a number two wide receiver. And then you just look at the tight end history with Ryan Fitzpatrick. There's no one. There, There is no one to speak of. And you even had a situation where they had a necessary player, and that was David Nelson back in Buffalo. He had uh, He had 97 targets that year. 61 for 68, 658 yards and five touchdowns. Like this is, those are not good fantasy numbers for for drafting someone to be, hopefully a, a top ten tight end. It, it, like you, you can go up and down the history with Ryan Fitzpatrick. The best one where Fitzpatrick was, you know, playing the most of the games because like, Ryan Fitzpatrick kind of gets benched a yeah, lot. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> he, he, he tends to get benched. Uh, but it was it was Mike Gesicki who finished as the tight end 11 and you like back his rookie year, you weren't really happy playing Mike Kosicki that year. And you look at Logan Thomas and his targets. If, if he's still really involved in this offense, right. And he drops in his targets share, he's getting 90 plus targets. That's still solid. But for fantasy football tight ends last year who were in the nineties, Noah Fant, the tight end 12 Hunter Henry, the tight end 13 and Eric Ebron, the tight end 15, 90 targets, doesn't cut it for a season-long fantasy tight end. Maybe maybe Logan Thomas can be a spot start every once in a while, but I just don't believe that with the the new players on the team and the new quarterback on the team, I think Logan Thomas should – you should not draft him at all. Even last year when they didn't have Curtis Samuel, if you just look at Alex Smith alone – that's 32 fewer target pace on the season. Basically, 90 targets versus the 120 targets he got when it wasn't Alex Smith throwing the ball. So now you you change to a quarterback that doesn't have that history and you add Curtis Samuel. I, I agree. Early in the offseason when we first started uh, our players out, um, I was thinking – I still had a really strong projection for Logan Thomas, and the more that I looked at it, I was like, that's – that's wrong. It's just incorrect. So I, I have updated. I'm completely on board. I, I don't think Logan Thomas is going to be more than a streamable spot starter. All right. I'm going to jump in and finish this up in the bust category with a player that I have a deep conviction about. Yeah, you do. Um, it has come on strong recently. I wasn't a huge fan of this guy last year, in part because he was connected to Gardner, and I wasn't a huge Gardner fan. But I want to talk about the illusion. That is the not superstar of DJ oh, Chark. Get bodied. He's DJ Chark. Yeah, let me explain what happened with DJ Chark in our world. Our memories of DJ Chark from back in 2019 were really, really flawed because we remember the boom start of the season in 2019 for DJ Chark. And you want to know why I remember it? Because he was a waiver wire pickup. You picked him up off the waiver wire. He was fun to add. He cost you nothing, and he finishes the wide receiver 16. He had four weeks as a wide receiver one in that stretch. He had six weeks over 15 points. But he was good. He was good. But our memories were a little bit flawed even in that year. He was the wide receiver, wide receiver 32 in consistency that year. And looking back, unless my numbers are wrong, he's given you four 
top 24 performances in the last 24 games that he's played. He hasn't had back-to-back weeks as a top 30 wide receiver since week three of 2019. Um, and what's happening to DJ Chark this year? What's the? Well, we don't even know who his quarterback is. <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll never. We, we'll who prob- would? We'll yeah. probably know. We won't know until the season opens. Here, here's the case for shipping off DJ Chark, uh, not drafting him at his ADP in redraft, and then shipping him off in dynasty, which I think you should do both of. Um, his dynasty value is a complete illusion because he is a free agent in 2022. He has no long term connection to Trevor Lawrence whatsoever. What does Urban Meyer think of him? Well, we've got one example. Here's his quote. I just didn't like his size, his strength. I thought it was way below average, way below what we expect from our wide receivers. Well, what did they do, though? Well, they went out and signed a much better wide receiver. Like Marvin Jones is a much better NFL wide receiver than DJ Chark is. Last year, they were running him on nine routes. His consistency has not been there. And I think that there's a very high likelihood that he is the number four overall pass catcher on this team this year. LaVisca Chenault is a talent. He is an up-and-coming talent. He's getting all the hype train right now, And Travis Etienne is going to catch a ton of passes out of the backfield. And they went out and pursued Marvin Jones, who, in my opinion, is better at everything DJ Chark is already good at. He's not faster than him. No. Maybe not. If they're running a straight line and you get fantasy yeah, points for you. that. Thank you very much. But he is actually really great at catching the deep ball. He's a contested catch guy. He's a player that does. Look, I feel like they went out and they said, uh, DJ Chark didn't like what I saw in film. Let's go get somebody that's better at what he does. And they went out and got Marvin Jones because DJ Chark's a free agent. They're not re-signing DJ Chark. I, I would agree with that. And so, um, you know, last year it, was, uh, it wasn't a good pick. I mean, you go out and you draft – him last year. No, it didn't work. Uh, round four pick, DJ Chark, no good. Didn't feel good. Didn't feel good for people that drafted him. Um, 57 for 706 and five. So I just think that DJ Chark is a player that we need to say goodbye to. It might be sad. I think there were times when you saw young AJ Green out there in 2019 and you said, boy, what is he going to be? But the, the pathway forward, it looks filled with thorns. <laughs> Yeah, the the least sticky stat, uh, the least predictive, you know, stat is the touchdowns. And if you remember what you brought up, Andy, was the beginning of 2019 when he was nuclear. Those first five games where he was a top 24 wide receiver in four of the five. He had, do you remember how many touchdowns he had in those five games? It Jelly. would be five. Oh, okay. It would be five. Yeah. Um, the only game he didn't have a touchdown was his only poor game. Really, it was just touchdown me, every you didn't every give time. Give me a chance to guess. I mean, yeah, that was, you were just yeah. It was it was rhetorical. it was a delivery. It was making a point. Yeah, got it. There you go. All right, so uh, <laughs> I've made a strong enough case there. Uh, if you still believe, I I get it. Um, young player, but I don't see the pathway. And I think the I think he was a phantom. He was a fantasy football phantom. Mm, those he, happen. He wasn't real. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, which does I mean I I do think Marvin Jones is going to have an interesting season. Maybe a little. I'm a little more optimistic about him than I may have been when they first signed him. Uh, if rookie quarterback. We'll maybe. See. Yeah. Maybe. Oh yeah, that's true. It yeah. could be a. It it could be Tim Tebow. Right. That's true. I R- forgot rookie, he's on the roster. Man, rookie quarterbacks though lately. Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. They ain't, they ain't slowing the roll. They're not. They're gonna pass that football. Right, but even even then, I mean, uh, you you look at Mike Williams, the number two wide receiver yeah. for Herbert wasn't great, and Joe Burrow, there was no even though he was, I mean, he was showing flashes. It wasn't like the wide receivers for the Bengals during that stretch were fantasy gold mines. Yeah, Higgins they, was okay. Yeah, he was, yeah. Oh, it was okay. It was Spreading the ball okay. around. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Early sleepers and values coming up on our next episode. You can check out jointhefoot.com if you want an extra episode each and every week. Support the show that way. But that's it. That's it, boys. We're done. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.